Hello and welcome to the 7 Minute Breakthrough Revolution. My name is Adam Mujabul and our topic this week is about compassion. This is my friend Haydar Al Musawi. He's the co-founder of Sirdab Lab, a startup hub for entrepreneurs in the heart of Kuwait City. For those who don't really know Haydar, he's a really close friend of mine. I saw him in one of the classes a couple of years back when I was into presenting and my, wanted to improve my presenting skills. He hosts classes like The Perfect Pitch and A Blend of Balance. And nowadays he's hosting a startup boot camp for entrepreneurs. So welcome everybody and welcome Haydar. Thanks for having me. For those who don't really know this about Haydar, but he used to be a religious extremist at one point in his life. I was really mm -hmm. surprised. Confession time, yeah. Confession time when he told me that. So I'm really curious on how that is connected to being compassionate. Uh, thanks, Saeed, first of all. Uh, so, uh, I make a distinction between a religious extremist and someone who's religious because extremists tend to take some concepts out of context. Mm -hmm. And the biggest one is when we start to divide each other based on our beliefs and our values. Instead of having uh, a sort of set of principles and values we want to share with, with others, we start condemning others for not sharing our own values as well. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So that's why when uh, religion or religious extremism can get in the way of being compassionate. We're judging others instead of uh, feeling compassion, feeling their uh, sort of their pains and uh, looking for opportunities to contribute to other people's lives. Wow, I love that. I really, really love that. All right, so that's it. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Um, the next question man, I wanted to ask you is, um, how can we be more compassionate nowadays? Okay. Uh, I hope you're sitting down, you're not operating any heavy machinery, because what I'm about to tell you may go in conflict with everything you believe about compassion. Because the truth is, compassion is not something that you gain, it's something you need to get rid of something in your life in order to feel more compassionate towards others. Mm -hmm. Now the thing that you need to get rid of is moral uh, beliefs. Now I'm not saying that morality in itself is bad, but if you notice, the times that you feel less compassionate and the times that you feel like you want to hurt others, it stems for, from a feeling that you want to get uh, revenge or uh, sort of like uh, get fairness to be, to be uh, dealt with justly. So you yeah. hope that others get punished in return. Yeah. Somebody crosses, uh, cuts you off in the road, you think, I really wish somebody, something bad happens to him. Mm. Now underlying that thinking is a moral principle which is based on the idea that uh, an eye for an eye. That's the sort of underlying thought behind it. Mm. So if you want to feel compassionate towards others, you need to abandon that way of thinking. And instead of saying, I wish that person gets punished, I wish that person gets what he deserves, you think, I really wish that person becomes a better person. I really, you, you hope that others become better people rather than sort of obsessing about what they were like or what they did to you in the past. Mm. And is it, I mean, me and Haida were driving here and we were talking about this, how um, compassion plays a huge role in driving. We had our compassion, <laughs> like, tested. <laughs> and um, is it like a muscle that you practice or are we instinct instinctively born with being I think it's, it is a muscle that you practice and uh, also you need to be constantly uh, aware of your responses. So to give you like a very uh, simple example, uh, two weeks ago, I had two months ago, sorry, uh, I had uh, paperwork at the ministry, mm -hmm. uh, and the the employee there said, "Okay, uh, come back to me tomorrow." When I went back to her the next day, she's like, "Your papers are not ready. Uh, I'm just uh, putting them in the mail as a request." So I was like, "You told me come back tomorrow." She's like, "No, I meant come back tomorrow so you can check on the status of your task or your mm -hmm. paperwork." And I got really frustrated. I couldn't even speak without saying something hurtful. So I chose to stay quiet, and then I, I left the building. And then I thought to myself, I, I, there was a choice that I had to make, whether to lash out, because uh, she made, uh, I felt it was disrespectful that she didn't, uh, like she didn't respect my time, telling me to come so I can check on my paperwork. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt really angry and frustrated. But then I sa said to myself, I want to be compassionate, and no matter what happens to me, I don't want to lose my temper. I don't want to insult or offend anyone else. So that's the choice I have to make and the commitment that I need to keep. And the thing is, being compassionate towards people who treat you well 
is not really compassion. It's easy. It's, it's easy, <laughs> okay? But those who sort of test out your uh, patients, sometimes that uh, you feel that they're offending you in some way, that's when you need to change your perspective and say, uh, I know better, or these people, maybe they didn't mean it, or I don't know what they're going through. So you try to empathize with them rather than say, uh, like, lash out or start judging them for what they did. That was very powerful, I think, also. Like, um, I remember somebody saying just feeling, instead of getting angry at somebody that hurt you, try to feel pity on why they did that thing. If you see, like, maybe their conditioning or maybe something that they went through in their life made them react in that certain way. Yeah, and the thing is, in, this, uh, in exactly the same way, we feel like reacting negatively. Mm. Uh, uh, those other people we're interacting with and that are testing out our patients, uh, are responding in a similar way. So, like, we need to set an example for others on how to, how to respond to negative circumstances, right? rather than expect those negative circumstances to dictate or to say, okay, since it was negative, since, since somebody offended me, I'm entitled to actually offend them back, yeah. okay? Because otherwise, you're contributing to that loop. Yeah, you're just reacting instead of acting. That makes sense. Um, and how does science come into play? I mean, there's mirror neurons where you actually unconsciously feel what the other person in front of you is feeling. So how can that be um, connected to compassion? Because a lot of people say that, that we're losing our compassion with technology and we're turning into robots and with everything that's happening in this world. Well, what's interesting is that um, as human beings, we have the capacity to reduce things to mere labels. So a person who's, who annoys you, you see them not as a human being, with a trait that's annoying, you find that individual as an annoyance, okay? So we remove that, uh, we uh, lose our sense of that person's ability to feel pain, to, uh, to be upset, to go through whatever they're going through. So uh, the mirror neurons uh, come into effect in terms of uh, how we respond uh, to someone else's feelings, uh, but at the same time, how do we set an emotional state for other people in order to have an, a positive impact on them? And I've had that happen to me a number of times when somebody gets really angry and I say, you know what, I was wrong, I'm sorry. Their negative emotions immediately collapse <laughs> wow. because you, at times yeah. you're able to set an example that influences how others behave yeah. towards you. Wow, that's so powerful, man. I really love this conversation. I wish we could go on for more than seven minutes, but I guess our time is up. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for that having me. That was so much, so much fun, guys. Thanks. If you have any questions for me, or Haider al Musawi about any topic, please don't hesitate to send us a message on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or visit our website on Life Talks Live. Thank you guys, it's been a blast. Stay blessed and stay compassionate.